You're very welcome back to Newbridge Silverware and we are here now in the Museum of Style Icons which is always one of my favourite parts when I come here and we're joined this morning by Martin Nolan, the executive, executive director of Julian's Auctioneers. Good morning to you. Good morning. And we have an uh, RDM exclusive this morning Absolutely. because it's the first time we're seeing some of the letters from the one and only Marilyn Monroe. Absolutely. The famous, the iconic Marilyn the Monroe. The blonde, voluptuous bombshell that the world loves and still loves. And still loves. 50 years on. And now, these are here just for today and tomorrow because you're taking them back to LA. But the first one we have here, this is actually her letter here. This is her handwritten letter. So tell us a little about this. Yeah, so this is very rare to see something in Marilyn Monroe's, Marilyn Monroe's handwriting. Over handwriting, exactly. yeah. Exactly, so 1956, Arthur Miller was wrote many letters to her and she's responding to one of his letters because he's praising her, telling her how noble she is and how great she is and she's saying, I'm really not that person. She talks about her doubts, her self-doubts, her nerves, her concerns about herself and the life she had, the difficulty she, she had growing up. So it's a really sad letter. She was so brilliant and yet she was, had so many self-doubts. But this was the demons. She always had the demons, She didn't had she? the demons. You know, her mother was in a psychiatric institution. Her grandfather died in a psychiatric institution. So she was afraid that that's the road that would, she would have to take as well. So it's great to see that this was it. Now, the, yes. the one here we have is a letter that you think is really special because it's a letter from Do Joe DiMaggio. Now, this Joe DiMaggio, she was announcing the divorce from Joe DiMaggio. He didn't know it until he heard about it. And he's writing this saying, please don't divorce me. I love you. Exactly. And that's all written in this letter. And exactly. So they were married only for nine months. And uh, he wanted a housewife. He wanted a mother. She wanted the career. She loved the limelight. And so that's where the difference was. He writes to her and says, come home. The painters are going to get started only when you come home. And he's concerned about her welfare. And then he truly expresses his love for her. Very poignant letter. But Alan, look at the penmanship. Look at that writing. We don't have this today with emails and texting and everything. This is an art that's gone. Yeah. He writes to her, Mrs. Joe DiMaggio, even though he's... Mrs. A, Joe DiMaggio. Exactly. She was still his wife. It, it, it is incredible to yes. see it. And also we have stuff here from Arthur Miller. So her third husband was Arthur Miller. Of course, a fantastic writer in his own right. Yeah. Very accomplished. He wrote amazing graphic detailed letters. And this is one where it's like quite descriptive in an almost lustful way. He's writing to... Yeah, are we getting any bit of gossip and scandal in some of them? Absolutely. Oh, really? Things were no different in the 50s and the RC, except today we text it or sext it. <laughs> Back then... But there's some spice. Down. Stuff there going on in some of these. Stuff. Yeah, oh, he's right. discovering her in the bed and in wow. the kitchen. And oh, what really? they would do by the lake and everything. Yes. So uh, I love yeah, it. It's, it's good I stuff in there. It. Yes. And they would write letters every day, and sometimes even two letters a day. That's incredible. Yeah, amazing. I love to see the fact that I love this letter that she wrote herself. You could just imagine her sitting there and, as you say, tormented, tormented. and saying that I, I'm not the person that you think I am and all that, and just going through that. Now, we also have some clothes here. This yes. is one of her favourite coats. We've seen it. Uh, if the, the Julian's Auction uh, brochure is here. Yes. And uh, you have her in this coat a number exactly. of times. You see her just there with Arthur Miller. But she, between 1956 and 1959, she wore this almost, so many times. You see her leaving Lennox Hill Hospital. You see her at the airport in the car with Arthur Miller. And it's in fantastic condition. It's in great condition. Yeah. Absolutely. And then this black cocktail dress. Marlon, of course, always, she wowed the world with the little black numbers. And this is a very famous dress she wore to a press conference for The Prince and the Showgirl, which you can see a piece here from the permanent collection of the museum. Behind us, yeah. Also from that movie. But there was a, a wardrobe malfunction on this little dress. We don't have a picture of it, but <laughs> it was literally one of the first wardrobe malfunctions because the strap went. It broke and all the paparazzi was there. There's video, of, in fact, people go online, they'll actually see it. She's holding the strap together with the dress, not to reveal anything. And then they fixed it with a safety pin. And you can see where the repair work was done on it. Uh, with Lawrence Olivia at the Plaza Hotel, Hotel, New York, 1956, Prince and the Showgirl, fantastic piece, not in great condition, so we're hoping to go to some good home that will restore it to its former glory. And literally the letters now, they are, you, they are going for auction next week. What do yes. you think they're going to fetch? Yes, and we have many more letters here at the museum, and we're here until uh, Friday night, so people should come and see them. This is so once today, in a lifetime. tomorrow is the only chance come that you're going to gonna gonna get a chance to see an actual letter written by Marilyn Monroe. It, so come today or tomorrow. How much do you think? So I think this should sell in a range of fifty to 100,000 because it's so poignant, it's so historical. 100,000? Yeah. 
a fantastic wow. piece. Uh, for Marlin herself, very rare to see something in Marlin's own handwriting. This would sell probably 30, 50,000, maybe even higher because there's so little of her writing out there. And uh, Arthur Miller letters probably sell 10 to 20,000. We have many, many of his letters. So they're highly sought after. Would the, would the juicier ones get a bit more? <laughs> Obviously. Yeah, of course. Well, of course. <laughs> the ones that are doing, they're <laughs> saying, saying, giving a little bit more explicit. <laughs> and of course, the display here behind us is, is a permanent display. These are the ones that are here for the days. And uh, we were just looking at the new Christmas edition over there, Miracle and 34th Street. I know, Christmas, we all come back to childhood. It's, Christmas is such a traditional time. And you see Miracle and 34th Street, Maureen Horace starred in that. She got her Oscar re recently. I was there for that ceremony. Fantastic. And you see Margaret, Margaret O'Brien, who I also know very well, and meet me in St. Louis, the little gingham number. So yeah, that's so... There's so much to, uh, here to you know, come along days. and, you, as I said, I say, have a stroll around downstairs, go to the restaurant and come up here and look at these wonderful stuff. But if you want to see these exclusive Marilyn Monroe letters, you have to be here today or tomorrow and then they're gone. Yeah, take so them if you to want, Los Angeles you're taking them to Los Angeles we're selling them on, on Saturday. 56. It is fascinating. We were so nervous earlier on. I had a cup of, cup of tea and he was going, <laughs> don't spill the tea on the letters. <laughs> Martin, always a pleasure yes, to meet uh, you. Thank absolutely. you very much for yes. that.